Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Emily, the home bookkeeper, and on this channel I help business owners and fellow freelance bookkeepers navigate the ever-changing QuickBooks Online, while also sharing insightful videos on all things business ownership and finance. As always, this is a sample company provided by QuickBooks for educational purposes only. I have a lot of property managers who watch my channel. So in today's video, I am going over the simplest workflow I could possibly think of for setting up a new renter in QuickBooks Online. You may notice something a little bit different on this screen. And instead of Craig's landscape and design business profile, we have Randy's Groovy Rentals. So keep in mind, if you see or notice any landscape company data from before. Over the past few years, I have noticed a huge increase in rental properties, including short-term rentals. And with that come the questions new rental property owners have about bookkeeping. In today's video, I am going over the simplest workflow I could imagine for adding a new rental customer into the system. This video will cover how to add a new renter or customer, how to attach their lease or rental agreement to their file, how to invoice them, how to automate your rent billing, and even how to set up an automatic late fee if the rent isn't paid on time. So let's say you have a new renter moving in. Say they already paid their move-in fees and you want to set up their first rent invoice. Click the white new button in the top left corner of your screen and under the customers column, click on invoice. Once inside the invoice screen, enter in your new renter's name. At this point, they should be set up in the system, but for example's sake, let's say that they are not. They gave you a handwritten check with their signed lease and you are now getting around to the bookkeeping side of setting up your new renter in QBO. Under the customer dropdown, start typing their name and click add new to open the new customer screen. You'll want to fill this out to the best of your ability as fully as possible. Be as detailed as possible. Having all of your customer data in QBO reduces the need to store any hard copy files eliminating the possibility of their being lost, stolen, or damaged. The IRS and courts also don't insist that you have hard copy documents. So storing all of your data digitally these days is perfectly compliant. Under notes and attachment is where you can scan in or upload their lease agreement. I highly recommend doing this even if they signed through a program like DocuSign. Download from DocuSign and upload here. You can add in notes, um, like if they have an emotional support animal or any out of lease communications or agreements that may need to be referenced later on. Renters are not taxed, so you can uncheck the taxable box. And when finished setting up, your new renter's customer file, click the green save and close button. Now for the invoice data. Once your customer file is complete, everything in the customer data boxes should automatically populate. Let's select a payment term of net 10. That means from the invoice date that you select, there will be 10 days until the invoice is registered as overdue. After 10 days, the invoice will automatically register as late. Clicking on the product and service dropdown, let's add in a rental service. Since this was previously a landscaping example company, this service is not yet entered but I figured this would be a good time to show you in this workflow. Since property rentals are not a tangible product or a item included in the production of a tangible product, rent is going to fall under a service. Once in the service screen, enter in your service details. 
You can name your service the address of the property, or you can keep it super simple and just name it rent. Under category, I would enter rent and under the income account, I would make a new income account for that particular property. This is ideal if you are planning on potentially adding more real estate to your portfolio later on, or already manage multiple properties or units. The detail type isn't as important here, but I like to keep things as in line as possible, and service fee income is the best fit for this type of income. When finished, click the green save and close button. Now that your service is set up, you can move on to making the invoice recurring. I don't think I have to express how automating things in your business where you can makes things so much easier. Things like rent for rental properties are one of the best things to automate as they are the same amount every single month. Clicking the blue create recurring invoice link under the invoice date box will open the recurring transaction window. Here you can enter in all of the details for your recurring invoice, such as how many days in advance you would like your customer or renter to be sent their invoice. As somebody who has rented most of her adult life, I prefer the option of paying my rent early or even being set up on an auto pay. So a little advance notice here is nice. For the example, I put five days in advance. With the customer data filled out completely, the email should be populated in the email box. Checking the automatically send emails box will send this recurring invoice to the renter's email automatically. Under the interval section is where you can enter in all of your recurring invoice data. Since this is more of a long-term rental, this will obviously be a monthly invoice due on the first or whatever your due date is every one month. And the starting date in this example will be set for February 1st. Hypothetically, the second month the renter was in the unit as it is typical to collect the first month's rent along with the security deposit. Now just scroll down and enter in the monthly rent amount. And if everything looks good, click the green save template button. Now, what happens if a renter pays late? I'm sure like most property managers or rental property owners, you are going to charge a late fee for late rent. Let's set up your late fee so it automatically applies to late invoices when they become overdue. Clicking on the gear icon in the top right corner of your screen, go into your account and settings. Under the sales tab on the left hand side, scroll down until you see the late fee section. Click on that little pencil to edit. Click the button to on and edit your late fee details. I am opting for a $50 late fee for this example. Leaving the grace period to none, this will automatically apply when the invoice becomes overdue. So whatever your payment terms are, net 10 is what we selected earlier. And there you have it. Your first renter is all set up completely and automated in the simplest way I could think of. Mostly everything was set up in the invoice screen. One of the things I love about QuickBooks Online is that there are always multiple ways to do just about everything, which makes things easy, but also creates 
more than one way to make an error. For more business resources, my online self-paced home bookkeeper masterclass, business supplies, gadgets, must-haves, and more, make sure to check out edjconsultinggroup.com backslash resources, linked below in the description. And of course, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on those bell notifications so you'll never miss an upload. If you have any video or tutorial requests, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And for even more behind the scenes content of life as a home bookkeeper, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Emma Dawn and connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you need more assistance, one-on-one -on -one QuickBooks online coaching or bookkeeping and payroll management, feel free to email or visit edjconsultinggroup.com. My firm is fully inclusive and ready to help you along wherever you may be in your entrepreneurship or personal wealth building journey.